Nine activists killed during the Israeli storming of a Gaza aid flotilla have been buried in Istanbul. All but one were Turkish, the other was a U.S. national of Turkish, or Turkish origin. Their bodies arrived in Turkey earlier on Thursday alongside hundreds of detainees deported by Tel Aviv. Israel decided to send home some 700 activists from various countries as international condemnation grew over its troops' actions. The U.N. Human Rights Council wants to set up an independent fact-finding mission to look into what it calls violations of international law. Let's cross live now to Paula Sleer, who is in Israel. Hi there, Paula. How is Israel reacting to all this growing international tension and pressure? Well, I think it's true to say that the Israeli government and the Israeli public are increasingly concerned by the fallout they're witnessing in the international community. What we're hearing from the Israeli government, though, is that they will not lift the economic blockade on Gaza. They're sticking by their previous argument that they are increasingly concerned that weapons are finding their way into Gaza, weapons that could then be fired on Israel. Having said that, though, we are hearing today that the government is going to allow for more humanitarian aid to enter the Gaza Strip. But the big question here in Israel is whether or not there will be an independent investigation into Monday's killings. And here we're hearing different points of view depending which part of the political spectrum leaders sit on. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, says that he is opposed to an Israeli po probe. This does seem to echo the view of the Israeli Defense Minister, although we're hearing the opposite from the Israeli leader of the opposition, Sipi Livni. She says that a committee needs to be established to ensure that the international community stays out. Now, the Israeli Foreign Minister, Avigdor Lieberman, says that the country has nothing to fear from a probe. He says he supports the call from the American President, Barack Obama, for an independent investigation. And what the Israeli Foreign Minister is putting forward is that there be some kind of probe that is Israeli conducted, but with foreign observers. The fallout from this whole incident reflects divisions within Israeli society, divisions that are reflected in this package that I put together earlier. Anger in the Israeli corridors of power. Hanim Zouabi, an Arab-Israeli parliamentarian, tries to make a speech, but is heckled before several people are escorted away. Zouabi was one of the nearly 700 passengers on the flotilla that tried to break the Gaza blockade. She was detained on her return to Israel. The Israeli army shuts the camera, uh, disconnected us from the satellites, and by cut, uh, after that, by cut all the cameras uh, of the journalists and also of the uh, passengers. So my question is why the Israeli army released just the shoots and just the documentation re re related to the Israeli injured? What about the documentation related to the dead bodies? A growing chorus of voices inside Israel is demanding answers. Russia's foreign minister called for an inquiry into the incident. We consider a thorough investigation of what happened is necessary, and I want to emphasize the raid took place in the international waters. Regarding the problems related to Gaza, we've repeatedly said the continued blockade is unacceptable. Unfortunately, the international community only started paying attention to the intolerable conditions of life for the people of Gaza once blood was spilled. This comes as the United Nations Human Rights Council strongly condemned the attack and authorized a fact-finding mission. One of the activists seized by commandos told us how he was treated by Israeli authorities. There were many Israeli troops from different units. They were intimidating and threatening us with prison. We were only given water when on camera. We weren't allowed to talk to each other and we were isolated. Many of the activists come from countries that don't have a relationship with Israel. They were bused to Jordan on Wednesday without legal representation or a voice in the media. Of course they opened friends at fire with combat cartridges. They even wounded some people in the head. It means that the occupiers were just murdering people who dared to resist them. The peace flotilla has ignited passions around the world and has perhaps created conditions for change in the region. Now, Paula, of course, is still with us in Tel Aviv. Paula, as we speak, it's said that some more humanitarian ships are on their way to Gaza. What is the feeling where you are? How likely is it that they'll be met with more violence? 
Well, there certainly is a mixture of reaction here in Israel. Of course, nobody wants to see this violence happen. But what we are hearing is that this vessel, an Irish vessel called Rachel Corey, it's named after an activist who was killed in 2003 at Rafa in Gaza, a young American woman. This vessel is currently at the high waters in the Mediterranean Sea, and we've received reports that it is waiting for two more ships to join it. The latest word from the official government spokesperson here in Israel is that some kind of diplomatic agreement has been reached and that the ship will dock at Ashdod. But we don't yet have independent confirmation of this. Of course, if this goes ahead and the Israelis commit themselves and, and adhere to that commitment to make sure that the Gaza makes the, the, the humanitarian aid on board that ship makes its way to Gaza, then all fears of violence will have subsided. But there are concerns that the Israelis will, that the ship will still trying to make its way to Gaza, the Israelis will intercept it, and there could possibly be a repeat of the violence. So at the moment, no one really quite sure, but certainly the latest reports indicate that there are at least three more ships currently heading to Gaza with the official comment from those ships that they need to deliver this humanitarian aid. Otherwise, Monday's deaths will have been in vain. Okay, and of course, here at RT, we'll be keeping a close eye on those ships set to arrive in Gaza, and if they make it, Paul will live from Tel Aviv. Thanks for that.